Vince McMahon in the news. Um, doesn't have anything to do with inside the ring, really, but everything to do with the corporate side of things. Vince intends to sell off approximately one-third of his stock in TKO, the company composed of WWE and UFC. That is according to an official press release yesterday. McMahon plans to sell 8.4 million shares of TKO stock, which is currently valued, or at least was as of yesterday, at $713 million. McMahon would receive all proceeds from the sale with Endeavor Group, TKO's parent company purchasing $100 million of McMahon stock. Endeavor CEO Ari Emanuel has also indicated his interest in buying $1 million worth of McMahon stock, while other unnamed company directors are also interested in purchasing $850,000 worth. The 8.4 million shares that McMahon would be selling off make up nearly one-third of the 28.84 million shares McMahon currently owns and would reduce his ownership stake in the company from 16.4% to 11.6%. The stock closed on Thursday at $84.90. It fell in the after hours trading and opened this morning at $76.87. In a September regulatory filing with the FCC, TKO announced that all of McMahon's stock would be available for a buyback and he would not be tied to the same restrictions that other large company shareholders would be held to. At the time that occurred, Axios reported that McMahon, having the ability to sell his, to sell his stock, quote, seems to be give, about giving McMahon flexibility or maybe even TKO flexibility, given the, given the ongoing investigation, end quote. As you may remember, there was a raid on uh, Vince and WWE again with Still the FCC investigating, and I guess the Southern District of New York still investigating, or the SEC, I believe it said the FCC, but the SEC and the Southern District of New York looking into payoffs that McMahon had made and, and in relation to all of that stuff. Uh, the filing said that McMahon, as well, as well as two other TKO executives, will be selling stockholders in this offering, meaning that they had planned to sell their stock at the time of the deal. This morning, David Faber on CNBC said that apparently, in quotes, it was about estate planning for McMahon, who is 78 years old. In this week's Wrestling Observer Newsletter, Dave notes that McMahon has to maintain 7 million shares to keep his position as chairman of the board of directors, and even when the sale goes through at over 20 million shares, he is comfortably above that threshold. I think everything could be true when it comes to the sell-off of the stock and how it was filed in the first place with the ability for McMahon to sell back the stock. He facilitated the sale. He was very important in that. He jammed his way back into the company to be a part of the sale, and he is reaping the benefits of the sale. And Again, the amount of money that he made off of that deal, the you know $713 million uh, that that stock was valued at, you know that's a big windfall for him. He just got a big windfall in a one-time payout to WWE uh, shareholders. Uh, he got a big you know check from that. So he's old. He's 78 years old. You know, no, no, no doubt about it. He is still married. To, to Linda McMahon, whether they have a super tight relationship or not, I have no idea. But, you know, in their aging years here, what can you do with all of that money? What are you going to do with this stock? How much are you even going to be involved in? It certainly seemed like this was all set up. So, yeah, Vince could cash out. But also, in case something did go sideways with all of the investigations and all the heat that Vince has had on him, they put in some checks and balances there that made it uh, obvious that they could buy that stock back if needed. And, and that's all of the stock in case something else actually happens here, which I don't foresee. You know, that story has been quiet. I guess if the government is working on something and they're quiet, we'll hear about it when they actually do something about it. It, but all of the talk about Vince and the LA Times article that came out uh, about a little, little over a month ago now and, and all that just seems to all kind of have gone by the wayside. So 
we'll see how it goes. But Vince McMahon selling off a, a large amount of stock and, again, reaping a whole lot of benefits from it. When it comes to inside the ring, WWE SmackDown will be at the Nationwide Center in Columbus, Ohio tonight. They have not announced a whole lot, but there is going to be fallout from last weekend's Crown Jewel pay-per-view in Saudi Arabia, where Roman Reigns defeated LA Knight to hold on to the WWE Undisputed Universal Championship. LA Knight has a match against Grayson Waller tonight, which... I would assume he gets back on the horse with a big victory there. I don't think they're quite done with L.A. Knight yet. Carlito against Bobby Lashley, which furthers the storyline between the Street Profits and Bobby Lashley and possibly B-Fab. We saw B-Fab pull Bobby Lashley away, so getting a woman into the mix to go square off against uh, Zelina, I would assume, uh, from the LWO. So Carlito and Bobby Lashley is tonight. And on the undercard, or I'm sorry, on the dark side of things, the dark matches that have been announced for tonight are Cody Rhodes against Damian Priest and Jay Uso against Gunther. So we'll, we'll definitely know that those guys are all going to be there, and we'll see how everything plays out for them on the show. WWE also has house shows planned for this weekend. Saturday, there's an event in Johnson City, Tennessee, and then they'll go about three hours north up I-81 into Roanoke, Virginia for a show on Sunday. Day. NXT also has at least one house show planned for this weekend. It's going to be tonight in Lakeland, Florida. I'm not sure if they have anything else kind of set up there, but there has been talk about, you know, can NXT run more live shows? Can they run bigger buildings when they end up debuting in October of 2024 on the CW? And I think it would be very simple to do that. I think it would be quite easy to do that. And Again, you have a lot of buildings in Florida, in Georgia, and in that general area where, again, you could run those shows on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, if you so chose, and then fly who you needed to, to on Tuesday to wherever it is that you're going. And, you know, to be honest, the more house shows that NXT folks have a chance to do, the better, because it's needed. Look, Lyra Valkyria, and there's a lot of other people on there that, you know, they're on the cusp of being players on NXT, but they need character development work. They need to be more comfortable inside the ring. And again, there's plenty of people that fit that mold, including all of those NIL folks that they bring in all the time. They got to get some work somewhere. And that way, when it comes to CW, hopefully at some point, you won't have to rely so much on the main roster. We'll be back, Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Mike Sempervivi here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. No Brian Alvarez today. He will be back with me on Monday on this show if you can't wait for that. And, hey, I can understand why, why you couldn't. You need the boss man in your life. Don't worry. He and Dave will be doing a show Sunday into Monday. Wrestling Observer Radio, only for subscribers of the site. And, of course, the Brian and Vinny show will be up on Sunday as well. I uh, safely assume that Dave and Garrett Gonzalez, uh, right about now or, or in, a, in a few minutes here at least, will probably be putting together a brand-new Wrestling Observer Radio that will be up on the site for everybody. If you need some alternate listening of Brian Alvarez, you can do that on my friend Brian Solomon's podcast, Shut Up and Wrestle, where Brian was a guest. And it is a very interesting conversation between two gentlemen about the same age who were involved in the wrestling media business at the same time on opposite sides of the fence, very distinct opposite sides of the fence. Brian Solomon working as an editor at WWE Magazine and, of course, Brian Alvarez and the figure four newsletter that he was producing at the time. And there are some very funny stories back and forth about uh, <laughs> the Observer being seen in WWE offices and some really great talk about wrestling uh, and how both of them view it. So you can check out that podcast wherever you get your favorite podcast. It is a free one. Shut up and wrestle with Brian Solomon. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers 
at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.